that's a big spider. There you go. Go ahead, sit down the leaf right there. Oh, it's in there. Okay. Ooh, no, it's not. Look out, look out, look out. Far beneath the dense canopy of the Costa Rican rainforest, a plethora of toxic creatures hide amongst the foliage and shadows. From hopping poisonous frogs to slithering venomous snakes, these so-called biological landmines can frequently be encountered in almost any stretch of wilderness. Tonight we are back exploring the 140-acre expanse of the Costa Rican Amphibian Research Reserve, where the crew and I are on the search for one of Central America's most dangerous arachnids. However, before we could even begin to look for eight-legged creatures, we stumbled upon the rainforest's most infamous pit viper. Well guys, one of the most common terms you hear me say is biological landmine. And we haven't been out for more than 15 minutes tonight and already we've come across one of the most toxic snakes in all of Central America, the Fairlands. It's right there. And tonight's episode is all about these biological landmines, so it's just coincidence that we came across this small one right now. All right, Mark, just crouch down real slowly there. You can see it's right in the middle of the walking trail. You barely is, see it. It is perfectly camouflaged. We almost stepped right on it. You can see it's staying completely still right now. And look at that camouflage. This speckled leaf-like patterning allows it to perfectly blend in to these leaves and all of this dark mud. I'm not even sure, like I've got a shot of you and a shot of it. I'm not even sure if people can see where it is. It's so camouflaged. Oh yeah, well actually that's a good thing. Why don't you just kind of give a general view of this area and let people try to pick it out on screen. Can you guys see the fair to Lance? Is it there? No. Is it there? No. Oh. Uh, this is, this is the snake. Oh, careful Mark. Right careful, careful, careful. Uh, this snake is no stranger to us. We come across fair to lance almost every time we are out here in the rainforest of Costa Rica. And I would say this one's small to medium size. We certainly come across some that are much larger than this. And this snake is responsible for more deaths than any other species here in Central and South America. All right, let's let this snake go and see if we can find some of those creepy arachnids. All right, you ready? Encountering snakes is all about being in the right place at the right time. But when it comes to encountering creepy crawlies, these encounters usually happen when you least expect them. Oh, is this that like cabin? Yeah. Jungle research hut. Ooh. There's some interesting looking spiders. That right there? Uh-huh. That's a fishing spider. Okay. That is a wandering spider. How do you know this? You can tell by the distinct stripe that's going right down the center of its back there. And so that's what we're looking for, just a little small. Yeah, it's a little small. We want something much bigger than that. All right, let's search all around the outside of this building. I feel that we're close. Oh, a scorpion. There's a scorpion back here in the thing. Huh. Yeah, there's a scorpion right back in there. You see it? Oh, yeah. Look at that. Let me see if I can, can get that out. out. Yeah, let me see if I can. Oh, there it is. Yeah, that's good hold. Here we go. It feels real comfortable on that leaf. Check that out. Yet another one of the Costa Rican rainforest's biological landmines. How dangerous is a scorpion? Mm, they vary. This appears to be some variety of bark scorpion based on its narrow front pinchers, but I do not know how potent the venom is, so I certainly do not want to be stung by any species that I cannot properly identify. Pretty good size one too, if it is a bark scorpion. Look at that stinger. Can you see it just in between my gloves there? Black tip stinger. Yeah. All right, let's place the scorpion back up on the side of this old shed and keep searching for the wandering spider. It was turning into a night of biological landmines, 
and while we came upon several different spider species, each one more creepy than the last, our target was yet to be located. So we continued into the night and headed toward a small jungle pond that was likely to have a world of creatures around it. Upon our arrival, all it took was scanning the overhanging tree limbs, and before we knew it, the rainforest's most dangerous eight-legged predator was in our sights. That one? Hold on, let me check. That's a big spider. Is it one? Oh boy, it, it's onto us. Look, look through there. Can you see the red underside to its legs? Can you bring the leaves down? Okay, I'm gonna back up. And it's really wedged in there. Let me see if I can see the spider in the leaf. Okay, let me let me see if I can grab it. You watch for the spider, right? Yep. Yeah. Okay, I got a leaf. There you go. Go ahead, set down the leaf right there. <laughs> Let me see the capsule. Yeah. Okay. Um, you guys got okay shots, right? Yep. You didn't see it run out of there when I grabbed the leaf. Did you? I did not. So there's webbing all over that. I think that's its permanent residence. So you probably don't want to destroy it. I see it. It's right in here. Which one? It's right in this leaf right here, this main okay, so stretch. Okay, what's the game plan here? I am going to put the end of the capsule right like this. And I'm going to gently try to coax it backwards into the container. Wait, where's the lid? Where's the lid? Okay. Okay. I don't have gloves, so you're on your own. Yep, everybody point. got a good shot? Yep. There it oh, goes. It's in there. It's in. Ooh, oh, no, yeah. it's not. Hold on. Nobody move. Look out, look out, look out. Back, 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 back. See how they jump? Got it. Woo! That was a little nerve wracking. Wow. Talk about one fierce looking spider. Okay, let's back away from this watery area. What I'm gonna do is actually place the leaf back up in the tree so that we can just put the spider right back up into the tree, okay? Here we go. Oh man, my hand is shaking. All right, where do you want to do the scene at? I say we go down to the jungle research hut and get this spider up close for the cameras. It's the most controlled situation we could be in. That takes a lot of nerves. A lot of nerves, guys. Woo! Oh man, that was definitely one of the most nerve-wracking catches of my entire career. I couldn't believe that when I tried to get it into the capsule and it sprang out, it came straight towards you guys. It was like a lightning bolt. Yeah, that is why we pay respect to the wandering spider. Let me take off my pack here and get a little bit more comfortable. I'm not gonna need the pack for this scene. I take off these gloves. Now I was wearing the gloves because I was afraid that if the spider leapt out of the tree, it may land on my hand and inflict one very very painful bite. Whew, here we go, guys. Now, we have been to Costa Rica many times, and this is bio landmine number one. You always see them hanging up in the trees, climbing up the trunks of the trees, running across the jungle floor. The wandering spider is quite possibly the most dangerous arachnid we could come across out here in the rainforest. Now, when I say wandering spider, that's a generalization for any spider species that's just crawling around out there on the rainforest floor. But there are actually eight cataloged species of Brazilian wandering spider. And I do believe that this is the Costa Rican variety. And the way that I can identify it as such is the quintessential red linings on the undersides of the legs. Let me tip it up and see if you can see that there, Mark. Look at those red legs. Now what this spider will do if it feels threatened by any potential predator is it will rear up like this on its back legs, revealing that red coloration. Now, aposomatic, right? Telling you that I am very venomous. Now if the red coloration doesn't warn you to walk away, you're gonna be bitten by two massive fangs that are armed with huge venom sacs. Wow. Yeah. And look at it looking at you. It's intimidating. I mean, it doesn't need to be scattering around inside of this container to know that it's extremely toxic. And you may be asking yourself, well, Coyote, are you gonna freehold this spider like you did the Black Widow? 
No way, guys. The bite from this is so much worse. Um, this is probably the only spider species that I've ever encountered thus far that really, really, really makes me nervous. Now you look at this, you're thinking, well, it's just kind of a big fuzzy spider. And I know some people have a horrible case of arachnophobia. And right now you're shaking in your seat thinking to yourselves, Coyote, how are you possibly holding this thing? But it is a creature that we do respect and we do love. And it is out here just doing its thing, hunting for bugs, hunting for small frogs. This spider is actually large enough where it can even take down some small mammals. That is one incredible predator right there. Sure, that time that, uh we were in Osa Peninsula and you actually put your hand right by one? I do, I believe that was the eyelash viper video. And somebody actually wrote in the comments section on YouTube, it said, Coyote, you're aware that was a wandering spider, right? So we immediately looked it up and we were like, ooh, yeah. Only the most dangerous spider in the area. My hand was literally inches from it. And as you guys could see from earlier, they are capable of jumping. That's what makes them, in my opinion, so scary. Now they're primarily nocturnal. So during the day they're hiding underneath old rotting boards, in between leaves, up in the canopy. And one way that people often come across these spiders is because they're constantly found in residential areas. During the day, they may even come into your house or hide in your boot, hide in your sheets. Anywhere that this spider can find a place to hide and stay out of the daylight is fair game. So you have to be extremely careful. That's why we always tell you, especially when you're in the rainforest, to check your boots before you put them on because overnight, a wandering spider could have crawled inside. And trust me, the one thing you don't want to happen is put your foot into your boot and you get a bite from this spider. Now, at full size, this spider can be about six inches in diameter. This one here is about four inches from the tip of its longest leg to the other tip of its longest leg. You hold it up for you like that, see that? Put my hand up next to it, kind of give you some reference. Whoa, that's a pretty big spider right there. Well, I would definitely say that it was one successful evening when it came to coming across many of the biological landmines that we see here in the Costa Rican rainforest. And nothing could have topped it off better than this enormous wandering spider. I'm Coyote Peterson. Be brave. Stay wild. We'll see you on the next adventure. The crew and I have encountered many spider species over the course of our travels some of which I have even been brave enough to handle, despite the risk of their toxic bite. However, when it comes to the wandering spider, there is no question about it. This is the most dangerous arachnid I have ever worked with. So if you find yourself in Central or South America, and you stumble upon one of these large predatory arachnids, do your absolute best to stay a safe distance from this biological landmine because its bite is without question something you never want to experience. I'm excited to wait to see that. All right, just gonna gently place it right back up Mission complete. If you thought the wandering spider was a creepy creature, make sure to go back and watch the episode where I freehandle one of Costa Rica's most common arachnids, the golden silk orb weaver. And don't forget, subscribe so you can join me and the crew on this season of Breaking Trail.